Buying a house is a big decision. Yep. It requires a lot of upfront capital, uses a whole range of emotions, and is a long-term commitment. Yeah, many believe buying a house is part of the American dream. I know and I know. a way to get rich. But we believe if you don't have a strategy, a house can turn from a wealth investment into a financial family trap. Mm -hmm. No one wants to be trapped. In this video, we will tell you the strategy we use to ensure that our real estate investments generate wealth for our families and what mistakes you should avoid so that your treasure of a home does not become a liability. Yep. Hi, I'm Nadia. And I'm Nicole. The Wealth Twins. Yes, millionaire moms that teach you all about investing, passive income, and financial independence. That's what's up. So how do we turn our homes into wealth investments? Well, we bought multifamily homes and practice house hacking, and you can too. Mm -hmm. Since we grew up in poverty, it was always our goal to buy a house for our family. If you come from a family of renters, you may feel the same way. Yeah, but for us, it was important more for us to focus on building our wealth rather than upgrading our lifestyles in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We wanted to start out small. Yep, our priority was to use debt as a means to build wealth. This is called leverage. Yep. It's just another way of saying using other people's money. Should I break it down for them? Other people's money is called OPM. Don't confuse it with OPP. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, we bought real estate investments that fit our housing needs at the time. That also, in, the, in, in top of that, it also brought in money to help increase our wealth. Yeah. Rather than something flashy like an oversized mansion that might give us some cool points. Yeah, seriously, those McMansions cost a lot of money to maintain and they hit the market real quick when there's a recession, okay? Shoot, just trying to get a contract in to give you an estimate to fix something in one of those houses oh God. will make you never even want to look at an expensive house. Yeah. Traditionally, the houses you live in do not provide cash flow, okay? Those are not cash flow investments. Mm -hmm. So you have to be creative in how you find a way to bring in passive income and build your wealth. The creative way we found it was to buy multifamilies. That's yep. what worked for us. Yep. Buying a multifamily property allowed us to create cash flow through house hacking. Yeah, it's not as scary as it sounds. Yes. You're not hacking up your house. We weren't looking to use house hacking as a get-rich-quick scheme we used it to be a financial channel to build passive income so that we can build and become financially independent. Yeah. Through house hacking, we were able to bring in tenants that helped us financially and help pay the mortgage. And in my case, even allowed me and my family to live mortgage free. You can do this. Okay? Did you hear that? She's living free. Okay. Yep. Did you know that the average American spends over 34% of the That's income? Over one third of your paycheck. On housing expenses. Okay. What do we spend, Nadia? Almost nothing, basically. Yep. Multi-families can be purchased for the same price or less than most single-family homes. That's the secret. They don't want to tell you that. Everybody's shopping for a single-family home. Multi-family homes are at the same price or less, and it can give you a big deal. And bring in money and put it in your pocket. If you know better, you do better, right? Yep. Passive income is the bridge between being poor versus being rich. Making money while you sleep instead of having to work hard all day to build your work, that's the secret. It's nothing more than that. If you want to work less and still get rich, I'm telling you, concentrate on making passive income. Yep. If you believe it is faster to becoming wealthy through investments that make you passive income than relying on a job, I want you to hit that like button so that we know that you're on the same page as us. Now, Nicole, I want to tell them two other factors that we use to make sure our houses were wealth investments and not financial traps for our family, all right? We get low mortgages and low mortgage rates, and that help us by keeping our properties low, and we also focus on keeping our taxes low. Yeah, why? Because the main way you make your house an asset that builds wealth is through equity. Yeah. However, you can only build equity as you pay off or pay down your mortgage. Yeah. The higher the interest rate and the higher the mortgage, the longer it will take you to build equity and make your house a good investment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To help build equity faster, you should buy a house with a smaller mortgage and a low interest rate. Interest rates on mortgages are at the lowest they have ever been right now. If you have decent credit, 
you can really capitalize on this opportunity right now to buy a house to build wealth. This is the time we've been waiting for. The rates are so mm -hmm. low. However, don't get too excited, okay, about all the opportunities you might be able to jump on right now because you need to consider something a lot of people don't, and that's the effect of taxes. What happens if you don't factor in taxes, Nicole? If you don't factor in taxes before you're buying a house, you might end up spending more money than you want to buy a house that isn't actually right for your family or is an investment. Yeah, everybody knows taxes will go up and they always go up. So make sure you consider them when you're running your numbers when you're buying a house. Mm -hmm. Websites like Zillow make it really easy right now. They give you an approximation of what your mortgage payment would be because they calculate the tax is the taxes in that fact in that number, right? Truthfully, it's easy to buy a house. The hard part is making that investment an asset that will increase your wealth. Say that again, okay? We are looking to keep a house that makes us money, okay? All right. So here are some mistakes you should look out for when you're using a house as an investment that you want to increase your wealth. Let me hit on with the first one. Mm. Don't get caught up on the aesthetics of a house. I don't care what the house looks like. When it comes to building wealth, I'd rather buy an ugly house and fix it up to a point where it's nice and safe to live in, but it doesn't cost me a fortune. New drywall, a good taper, and a couple of cans of paint can make a home come alive. You yeah. have to have that vision. You ain't never lie, right? You want also to buy a house you can afford on one income. Yep. That way you give yourself a cushion to make sure you don't lose that house. Yeah, the bank is going to give you enough rope to hang yourself. Don't take all the money they're willing to give you. Make sure you're coming with more so that you can use it to just pay for that house with one income. And this includes for those that are house hacking because you don't want to buy a place that you're depending on rents. When you're depending on rents to pay the mortgage, that will put you in a position to need the rents. Yeah. If you, if you have a vacancy or a bad tenant, you can lose your house and your wealth. Mm -hmm. Don't let the hard work you did to find a house, fix up that house, and... Make sure it's good for your family. Go down the drain because your numbers depend on someone else. Mm, hit them with it. This is a lesson we both learned by watching what happened during the last financial crisis. Many people were laid off. Yep. And at the same time, many people lost the houses that they had because they, no, they were no longer able to afford them. Yeah, and their wealth was tied up in those houses. Mm -hmm. The financial crisis also showed us how bad economic inequality was and still is in this country. And how many people's wealth is really tied to their jobs and their homes. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it also made us understand the importance of building wealth for financial independence. And that's why we try to spread this message as far and as many times as we can. Yep. You know, the sad part is that a financial crisis can happen again. And if the economy, especially if the economy now doesn't turn around. Yeah. And a lot of people are going to lose their wealth and their assets. Yeah, it may sound foul, but if you've been following us, there will be a lot of opportunity for you very soon for you to make a jump in your wealth. Mm -hmm. If you're ready, type I'm ready in the comments. I know I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> right. To help you make looking for the right house a little easier, I'll tell you four things I look for when I'm buying a house for investing purposes, right? One of the things is, is it close to a park and or transportation? These are desirable lo locations. It doesn't matter if the park is ugly now. Eventually, that park will get cleaned up. Okay? Now, I'll add one in. I want to know how much are the rents are in that area, yeah. right? Have the rents been rising? Is it something that someone wants to rent? Because we're looking to get something that's going to help pay down a mortgage, and something that's going to be desirable for someone to actually look to rent. Yeah. Now, another thing is, I look to see if the taxes are low. If you're not worried about schools for your kids, maybe you don't have kids yet, you can pick up some really good investment deals in areas where the property taxes are still low. Right? And it's also, you got to look and see if that area has the potential to grow. Have people discovered this area yet? Are they scared to invest in it? Those are where good deals can be found. Okay? Mm -hmm. But when you're looking for good deals, make sure that you're looking for something that just needs a little cosmetic work rather than the full renovation because renovations take away your money, yeah. right? When you have the end goal in mind about buying a house for wealth investment, then you'll be less susceptible to buying something outside of your price range and something that will drain your finances 
rather than increase them. So remember those tips that Nadi and I shared. Yeah, remember, we're looking to grow our wealth, not be house poor. People mm -hmm. won't tell you that. All their money goes straight to the house. They're a house poor. Might be a nice house, but they're broke. Okay. <laughs> Buying an investment will allow you to enjoy the house more because it's helping you to achieve your financial goals, yeah. and it can be passed down to your children which will allow them to continue creating passive income. That's how you create generational wealth. Woo-wee! So, and then that's what you want to do with your investments, yeah. okay? So with that in mind, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel for more wealth building and investment insights. We would love to have you in our community. Yep, we look forward to you joining us, guys. I'm Nadia. And I'm Nicole. The Wealth Twins. See, See you in the next video. video.